Hi there and welcome back to the Knitpal podcast. Um, I'm hoping this lighting is okay and I'm not too under or overexposed but we will have to see. Um, thank you for joining me once again. If you haven't watched my videos before my name is Sophie and I am the Knitpal girl over on Instagram, Ravelry and my website. Um, today I hope you can tell I mean business. I'm wearing my glasses so I need to be able to see what I'm doing. Um, that's how serious today's episode is. Um, and you might remember if you watched my last video that I mentioned that I am a mohair nutcase. I just love it. It's it's my favourite type of yarn. Um, and I've just realised I'm wearing brown again. Getting sidetracked. Anyway, um, yes, you might remember that I, I said that I am obsessed with mohair. And my lovely friend Caroline of Caroline's Knits had the wonderful suggestion that I make a top five, bottom five video because I don't necessarily want to go into every single yarn review that I've tried because um as I'll show you in a second in a cutaway <laughs> I have tried a lot of mohair yarn um I think I've tried how many about 70 different mohair yarns at this point and I've still got a few more to try in here um so yeah I, I consider myself an expert on this subject <laughs> um I don't know about PhD in numismatics I'm meant to be doing I've definitely got it in mohairology which is great um but yeah I, th I thought that was a really great idea because yeah you don't necessarily want to have like a this is a yarn and this is another yarn kind of video but I thought um something a little bit more constructive could be helpful so yesterday I tried on three separate occasions to film that video and I, I went through the footage and I just wasn't quite happy with it I thought um well for a start I filmed it too late in the day by the time I was actually happy with the take um so I was almost pitch black by the time uh, we got to it uh, by the time the video was nearly over and then I also thought that it wasn't actually necessarily that helpful so if you are somebody who um, hasn't necessarily tried much mohair in the past or is just a bit overwhelmed by the amount of choice there is in the market which is very reasonable um, I didn't think it would be that helpful because it was so informed by my biases um, by what I enjoy as a knitter that I, I just thought I think I need to restructure that a little bit. So I've actually kind of rejigged my list a little bit and I've got a few different categories. So I've got um, what I think you should outright avoid, what I think is a bit underwhelming at the price point, um, budget friendly option, fluffiest, luxury, general all rounders, something subtle, something a bit more matte if that's your preference, something really glowy and really silk forward, um, interesting options, mohair alternatives and ethical yarns. Um, so I hope this is going to be a little bit more useful. Um, I'm going to try and keep it quite light and not too heavy, but I will um, write up, or I'll, I'll set up a blog post on my website with slightly more in-depth reviews and product information, so that'll be in the description box down below. And then I think for every yarn that I talk about in the little caption down here, editing me is going to hate this, I'm going to do kind of the stats, so like um, what the RRP is, what the price per 100 meters based on that RRP is, um, how many meters you get in a skein, um, and kind of how much of a pain in the ass is it to actually get a hold of in the UK because um, that's what I can speak to. So yes, um, make yourself a cup of tea because I think this is still going to be quite a long video but um, Caroline told me that was okay so if it's really long and boring you can blame her. Hello, editing Sophie here. Um, I just wanted to interrupt myself quickly and say that my friend Caroline, um, who I mentioned before, she has also just released a video all about mohair. And I think that her video um, is much more about like her personal preferences. Whereas I think what I'm going for here is like a general, if you're wanting this in your project, try this yarn. Um, but definitely check her video out. It's really good and very informative. Um, she knows her stuff. So yeah, I really recommend watching it. Um, and then I'm going to crop up a couple more times in the video interrupting myself just because there are a couple of things I didn't quite express the way that I wanted to um, and I missed out a couple of yarns so I'm just gonna I'm gonna jump in every now and then so see you soon <laughs> okay so I'm going to start things off on a slightly more negative note which um, I don't really love to do but then I also thought that um, if I want people to take away one thing from this video I figured the most useful thing would be what should you avoid on the market um, and I feel like this is going to be a slightly controversial take and I feel like people might assume that I'm a massive yarn snob, if they haven't already, um, for saying this. And I think there's probably some merit in that. Um, but I also think it 
taps into a discussion of value for money versus cheap for the sake of being cheap. Um, so to get past my ditherings, what I am absolutely not recommending and would advise you to avoid are two yarns from Hobby and they are Diablo and Alpaca Blaze. Um, now I see people using these quite often and I've seen people use them to really great success. So for instance, uh, my friend Fabi, Fabi Mitz, she made my Aosta sweater mohair edition using Diablo and seemed to get on with it fine. Her sweater is absolutely beautiful. And yeah, I think I know that it has worked really well for people. Um, I think one of the reasons it's so popular as a yarn is because it is really, really affordable, which is great. I'm all about that. Um, when I was in the first year of my PhD, for instance, I was not doing very well financially. I was really, really struggling and um, I couldn't really afford to buy very nice yarn. Um, so like, for instance, I went all in on this really quite horrible yarn from Hobbycraft that is like a mohair alternative. Um, and it's not totally dissimilar to the Hobby yarn, which I'll get into in a sec, but um, I kind of think if I was speaking to myself then, like from a couple of years ago, um, when I couldn't afford such a nice yarn, um, I would tell myself not to go for the cheap stuff just because it's cheap, because it's slightly too good to be true. Um, I've got a few reasons for thinking this. Um, first is the actual yarn composition. So I want to be clear from the start that I don't really like synthetic yarn, um, partly because I don't like working with it. I've got, like I've mentioned before, I have chronic dry skin on my hands. It's actually quite bad at the moment, so sorry if my hands get on these shots and they're not very nice to look at. Um, but any kind of synthetic yarn really, really catches on my skin and like, it's just so uncomfortable to use. So the knitting experience is actively unpleasant. And then the other reason I don't like it is because um, it makes me really sweaty to wear. <laughs> you know, all glitz and glamour here, but um, it does. It's It doesn't really agree with me. I just find it really uncomfortable and I'd rather not have it next to my skin. And then the third reason is environmental, just because obviously um, I, I don't really want to get into this because I know it's, it's a hot topic um, and I am not an expert. Um, but yeah, the, obviously adding more plastic and microplastics from synthetic fibre into the environment isn't ideal and um, that is all I'll say on that because I'm not an expert. Um, so yeah, I don't really like the feel of these fabrics that they produce. I have swatches, yeah, I keep all of my swatches in this. I have a lot of swatches. Um, where are the right ones though? Okay, I've misplaced my hobby swatches but I will have a clip over this. Um, so you can see what I mean, but um, yeah, the fabric's just not very nice. I think that um, the alpaca kind of just looks a bit matted and then the mohair I think looks plasticky and again, I'm probably gonna have people saying that I'm being like a yarn snob and who am I to um, knock something just because it's cheap. But the thing is I'm not knocking it because it's cheap. I'm knocking it because I don't think it's good. Um, I also, and, and I don't want you wasting your money on something just because it is cheap. Um, I've got a better set of budget friendly options um, and I can't imagine it adding either of the yarns adding anything to a project so I think if you were holding a mohair alongside another fibre um, and you were to choose one of the hobby ones um, I just think I just think there are better cheaper options on the market for you and then I personally couldn't really recommend holding them by themselves to make fabric like just just themselves so that's my hot take I don't really see the point so these are they're both 40% acrylic and then the Diablo so the mohair version is 30% um, nylon as a silk substitute which is fine and they're really great so hip knit um, do a really great mohair that's 20% nylon instead of silk and it works really nicely and there's a couple of others on the market too and then Alpaca Blaze uses Polymede as a silk substitute and then they're both 30% alpaca and mohair respectively. Um, and I just don't, in a way I'd kind of prefer them if they were all out acrylic. So this, um, ooh, this Hobbycraft yarn that I mentioned that I don't actually think is available anymore. This is 52% acrylic, 30% nylon and 18% wool and it's um, like I say, I, I, don't, I don't really like this either. I, I bought it to make a petite knit, uh, Sunday sweater mohair edition, like back, like I say, when I was in my first year of my PhD and I couldn't really afford much yarn. I could get like enough yarn to make a sweater for 30 pounds, I think. Um, like that was a couple of years ago. I think that prices in general have gone up since then. 
a whole other story. <laughs> um, but uh, that was a waste of money. I haven't used that yarn because it was so horrible to work with. So that's kind of what I'm getting at, like, um, but yeah, my, my point was I got sidetracked there. In a way, I'd almost rather there was less animal fibre in it and it was just like an all out synthetic substitute because there is so little tangible benefit to the amount of animal product there is in that, in, in the hobby yarns, that I just, I just think they're really bad. <laughs> I, please don't buy these. Um, I've worked with Hobby in the past and I've gotten on with a lot of their other yarns and actually their own brand mohair is fine. Um, it's fairly, yeah, it's a good yarn. It's 30% silk, which I tend to like. Um, it's a nice, like, fluffy yarn. It's not one of the yarns I would necessarily recommend, but um, with Hobby, if you buy a certain number of skeins, you get a bulk discount. So, you know, even this, it's going to be quite a lot more expensive. It'll probably be double the price of a Diablo or Alpaca Blaze project. It'll be so much nicer. Um, so, yeah, those are my thoughts on Hobby. That is what I do not recommend and would advise you to avoid. Um, I just think there are better cheaper options on the market. Okay, and on that note of budget-friendly options, um, the next category is going to be the best yarns that you can get on a budget. Um, so one of the brands that immediately comes to mind for me is Drops, if I'm looking for um, something to make and I, I don't want it to be too expensive, I want to keep the costs, let's say like under £50 for a sweater, um, or even less than that quite often. You can Drops is very affordable, um, and their mohair is no exception. So this is you can see I have used and abused these skeins. <laughs> so of all of the yarns that I considered, uh, Drops Kid Silk Unicolor, um, and their multicolor, um, is the cheapest per 100 meters on the UK market, and it comes in at one pound eighty one per skein. That's uh, right, per 100 meters, and about three pound eighty per skein. Um, so yeah, it's really, really, really good value for money. Um, it's also a really good yarn, so if I am making a project with wool and I want to add a mohair just for a bit of strength, so um, quite often if I'm using Weir Knitters the Petite Wool, I will add a strand of Drops Kid Silk just because I think it adds a little bit of extra structure, it adds a little bit of extra fluff and texture and it's just really nice, <laughs> it feels so soft. Um, that, that yarn really benefits from being held with a mohair in my opinion. Um, so yes, I, think, I don't think you can go wrong, it is 75% mohair, 25% silk, um, it's great, uh, the gauge is lovely, it works up quite nicely, um, you can hold it multiple strands together and do some really nice lace work, so this is the Leaf Stitch popularised by Melanie of the Knit Stitch. Um, I made this sample about two years ago actually, and I held four strands together, and it's it's lovely, um, really really nice for lace work. This is it, let me double check that, yep this is it by itself. Um, so for all of these swatches I'm showing you, I made them with the same set of 5mm needles, they have the same stitch count, I made them as consistently as I physically could. Um, but yeah, it's really lovely fabric, nice and fluffy, it's kind of everything you would want from a mohair at a budget. So I think if you really are looking for a, a mohair based project, or you want to add mohair to another project, I, and, and you are working on a budget, I recommend drops above anything else. If you can't wear mohair, if it really irritates your skin, Drops has another great option, which is their brushed alpaca silk. So this is slightly thicker than Drops mohair, so this is it worked up. And I think you can see, um, if I pick the other swatch up again quickly, I think you can see how much denser, if I hide here you can actually see, how much denser the alpaca based fabric is. Um, and that's quite common across the board. I'd say um, most alpaca mohair alternatives are a bit thicker. There is one and possibly two exceptions that come to mind, but I will get onto those in just a moment. Um, and per skein, this is the cheapest product on the market. Um, drops brushed alpaca silk. Um, yeah, it's like one couple of pounds per skein or something. It works out slightly more expensive per 100 metres, a whole 5p more expensive, um, but that retails for about £2.60 per skein. So yeah, it's a really, really good value for money product, and um, I'd say if you are making a project that calls for three strands of mohair held together, you could use two with the drops brushed up alpaca lace, and maybe you'd want to be slightly conscious of that if you're holding it with another fibre. So you might find that your gauge is a little bit 
different to what the pattern calls for if it's if it's calling for a yarn and a mohair and you're using the uh, brush upacker instead of the mohair then yeah it's just something to be aware of but um it's a really great option on a similar note um i have to recommend camarose midnight sun so this is just the white shade and this is another alpaca based uh mohair alternative yarns so this is 54 percent baby alpaca 36 percent tensile and 10 percent merino wool it is ever so slightly thicker than a true mohair but it's much thinner than a than the drops brushed alpaca and other alpaca alternatives so i think you can see what i mean there so there's the true mohair the camarose and then the drops brushed alpaca lace so yeah this is another really great option if you can't tolerate mohair and you want to use a lace weight fluffy yarn this is a great option and I'm including it in the budget for any category because it is £5 per skein. Um, at least I think so. It's, it's about that. I think from Loop London it's £5. Um, and yeah, it's a really great option. There is also a sparkly version, which is fun, called um, Moonbeam. Um, and it's a very similar yarn. It's The blend is slightly different. So it's 68% baby alpaca, 12% merino wool, 16% polymede and 4% polyester, which I think is the sparkle. It's quite subtle. Um, I think that that is slightly more expensive as well, but um, we'll get back to that in a moment. Um, but yes, so that is another great kind of budget friendly. It's slightly more expensive than both the drops and the hobby yarns, um, but so much nicer. <laughs> so next up, um, I thought I would do a slightly different category. So we're going to be talking about the fluffiest option. Um, quite often when I think about mohair yarns, I think about fluff and I think about, I mean, like when I'm working like this with so much yarn around me, I am physically sensing all the fluff because it is ooh, flying around like crazy. Um, but yeah, I think one of the main reasons that you might want to use a mohair yarn is to add a bit of fluff and a bit of texture to a project. I know for me, that is how I often like to do it. Um, and there was only one option in my mind um, when I thought about this and it is Isia Silk Mohair. Um, I bought it in the most underwhelming shade of grey. <laughs> I really regret the colour choice of the sample because I think it kind of undersells how lovely this yarn is. Um, if I hold it up to the camera, um, I hope that you can see kind of how far the fluff is radiating off of that. Speaking of Caroline, once again, she very kindly sent me um, a skein that she had left over in a much more attractive shade. And I think in this case as well, you can see that the fluff is really quite prominent. Um, so this is fairly similar to the Drops um, yarn in terms of blend, so it's also 75% Kid Mohair, 25% Silk. I'd say it feels slightly more refined than the Drops, like it is um, slightly softer, so even though the blend is the same, um, and the Drops is also pretty fluffy, um, I think that this is a slightly more sophisticated product. Um, it swatches up really beautifully, so this is what it looks like, and again I think you can see even from this distance, how fluffy that fibre is. And I'll have like a closer up shot. It also feels very soft on the skin, so you don't have to worry about it being too irritating. Um, and it's just a really lovely product. I think that this is slightly more expensive. Yeah, so it is ever so slightly on the top end of the UK, um, not on the top end, but like over the midway point of price per 100 metres in the UK. Um, but if you really do want a fluffy project, then I don't think you can go wrong with this here. So on the other hand, if you want something that's really subtle and that isn't going to compete too much with another yarn that you are using, I cannot recommend Sanders Garn um, Tin Silk Mohair highly enough. So when I was researching um, for this video, I had looked through my stash and I was flicking through and trying to see what do I actually have the most of? What have I stocked up on for projects? Because that's a really good indicator of you know what I actually like using. And Sanders Garn Tin Silk Mohair was far and away the most common mohair yarn in my actual go-to stash. This is kind of my, my research stash here. Um, and there's a good reason for this. It's a lovely, strong, warm yarn that's very available in a beautiful range of very subtle colours that won't compete too much with another fibre. So when I was making my crescendo blouse, for instance, I wanted to use um, Sanders Sunday because it has such lovely stitch definition and it's a very unfussy yarn, which I really enjoy. And I wanted to add a mohair just because um, I like to. <laughs> it bought the needle size up a little bit. It adds a nice little bit of dimension to the fabric, um, makes it a bit softer, a bit fluffier, you name it. Um, and Sanders Garden Tin Silk Mohair was a great option for this. So I've got a little fabric swatch here. So this is Sunday in the shade Baby Blue Eyes. 
um, held with Sanders Tin Silk Mohair in the shade Sky Blue. And I hope you can see that it's just got a really subtle halo, a very subtle mull where the color, where the colours don't quite match. And it's just a really, really beautiful, very, very drapey fabric. Um, I love it so much. Held by itself, Tin Silk Mohair is also really lovely. So this is a beautiful forest green shade. Um, and it's just a lovely, I need to stop saying lovely. It's a very pretty, <laughs> quite subtle, unfussy yarn. Um, I think the reason for this kind of Sanders having this kind of nature is because it has some wool in it. So the blend of this is 57% mohair, 28% silk and 15% wool. Um, and I think the wool adds a little bit of bite and it helps it blend in with other fibres really, really nicely. It's worth noting that Sanders does have, if I can find it. Okay, I can't find it because it's hidden under all my swatches, but I'll find it and I'll take some shots and put them in later. Um, but yeah, Sanders does have a second mohair just called Silk Mohair. It is ever, ever, ever so slightly thicker. Um, like we are talking degrees of thickness. Um, and it has an ever so slightly different blend. It's also quite a lot more expensive, so I don't really recommend Silk Mohair, even though it is a lovely, lovely yarn. Um, so I've got two swatches here. So this is Sanders Silk Mohair swatch swatched up, and it's a really nice, dense and slightly thicker mohair and this is tin silk mohair and the colours don't really help here because one's very dark one's white but I think even so you can kind of see what I mean this is thicker so I think tin silk mohair is the way to go I think it's really good value for money um, it works out at it works out at £3.77 per 100 metres and it retails for about £8 it's definitely one of my most highly recommended mohair yarns and then let's say that you want to use a mohair but you actually really don't like the look of like a fluffy shiny mohair you it's just not for you i get that sometimes it's not really appropriate for a project and it's just not going to be to everybody's tastes so i've got a few options here for you um and essentially you're going to be wanting to look for something that isn't a mohair you're probably going to want an alpaca based wool um, so I've got a few good options. The first one that comes to mind once again is Camaro's um, Midnight Sun because it is very, very matte. Um, there's a slight glow from the Tencel Core, um, but it's a true lace weight mohair alternative, which isn't the case for a lot of these as we've already discussed. Um, so it's very versatile and very matte, so you can use it without kind of in a similar way to the Sanders, but I think even for some people the Sanders will be too glowy. Um, so yeah, that's a great option. The other option for you is We Are Knitters Touch Me Mohair. Now I have a complicated relationship with this yarn. <laughs> um, if you followed me for a while, you might have heard me rant about it quite extensively um, because you know, I'm the kind of person who gets really worked up about a mohair. So my reason for having problems with this yarn is to do with the marketing. I think it should be called Touch Me Alpaca, not Touch Me Mohair, because it is 54% Baby Alpaca, 24% Marlboro Silk, and 22% Super Kid Mohair. So it really winds me up when brands um, market their yarns based on one fibre when actually it doesn't contain very much of that fibre. It's, it's, it's very frustrating to me. It's a little bit like Alpaca Blaze, like that kind of rubs me the wrong way as well, because it's like, well, there's very little alpaca in it in relation to everything else so why you it annoys me um however i've kind of grown to love touch me my hair <laughs> i think it is a really lovely fiber and i hope as you can see it is very matte so it worked up by itself so just a single strand it's very underwhelming in my opinion like i think the tension is a bit rubbish and not hugely keen on it held double however i think you have a really lovely teddy bear like fiber um it's very matte so again if we hold up let's go for let's try and find one that's a similar color yeah if i go back to the isia you can kind of see that it has a little bit of gloss to it that's not really the case with this um that's maybe not the best example yeah you can see there's a little bit of shine to a mohair that's kind of part of the fiber and that's just not really the case at all with this um but it is a really lovely product well i've used this in one of my aosta slipovers uh, in the beige one and it um, adds a really nice teddy bear finish and I also think it works really really nicely held with Vianne it is the Finiti yarn so this is a little fabric sample that I made of that and it, again it's just a lovely teddy bear finish um, it's very soft 
it almost feels a bit like a boucle yarn um, it's just really quite lovely and quite interesting so if you're looking to play with texture in a different way I think that that's a really good option and it's also worth noting that we are knitters in the UK at least recently lowered the price of touch me, touch me mohair so it used to be 19 pounds for 400 meters which I thought was very expensive and it's now 11 pounds per 400 meters which I think is brilliant um, and really really good value for money um, I just wish it was called touch me alpaca I don't think it's much to ask <laughs> I think on a similar note um, a really nice option is we are knitters the fuzzy yarn um, full disclosure I actually collaborated with with we are knitters on a free design called the fuzzy vest using this yarn um, I paid for this myself though um, for what it's worth so you know I do I do really love it and um, this is a really nice yarn it's another kind of alpaca based one so it's 40% alpaca super fine alpaca 41% uh, fine highland wool and 90% Donegal and it's again a very matte finish so here is a lace sample that I wor I've worked up using the fuzzy yarn but yeah I think so it's really um sorry I lost my train of thought my partner called me and people talking outside there's a lot going on I can't wait to move <laughs> um so yeah this is a lace sample that I made up with the fuzzy yarn and it's really lovely this was uh, on six millimeter needles I believe um, and it's two strands held together which is really nice but it also works very beautifully by itself and I will have some I can't be asked to look for the swatch but I'll have some footage of the fabric from my fuzzy vest over in the distance now whilst I'm rambling um but yeah so this is quite an interesting one so it's also very matte but it does have the Donegal so that's the kind of thing that you're either going to like or you're going to not like it's also slightly thicker so we in it is recommends a four millimeter needle in truth I think you want a three and a half or a three millimeter needle by itself a lot of the time um or a six millimeter needle holding it together it's my two cents um but yeah it's a really lovely yarn and I do really recommend it it's not just where I've worked with whack um on this but you get 400 meters per 100 grams um it's really it's good value for money I think and it's an interesting yarn which we always like it's not quite a mohair substitute um, but it's a good alternative if you want like a fluffy interesting product on the flip side so we're flip flopping all over the place let's say that you want a really 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 shiny looking mohair have I got the option for you <laughs> um, so this is a really interesting and beautiful yarn and I always think it looks like spun metal um, I don't know how well my camera's going to pick up this colour um, but it is from Onion so it's a Danish brand um, and if I can show you how glowy the silk core of this yarn is so this is 40% mulberry silk and 60% super kid mohair from south africa i also have this in a pink shade in my stash in the other room which i'll try and find um and it's a really lovely yarn it feels very silky uh, which makes sense because it has got a high silk content but it's also slightly more fluffy than a lot of the other high silk content yarns that i'm going to talk about in a moment so i think if you want a very heathered look I think this is a really great option. I know that Rowan um, Kid Silk Haze is also marketed as being quite heathered and it certainly is. Um, so I've got it in this fabulous <laughs> tangerine orange shade um, and this also has a fairly, if I hide behind the yarn, a fairly prominent silk core but I think the onion is next level and this is just a beautiful beautiful yarn. Onion is a fairly small brand um, and I think they do really interesting products. Um, I've been really impressed by what I've tried in the past and like just sampled and felt. So yeah, I think this is a good one. Um, it's a really interesting option. This is what it looks like swatched up. And I kind of think that if you could hammer out gold and knit with it, this is kind of what it would look like. It's, it's just stunning. It's slightly thinner. I think on five millimeter needles like this, you'd really want three strands for like a nice full fabric. But on four millimeter needles, two strands would be beyond gorgeous and I think it'd be really nice as well held with another fibre just to add a bit of interest and it is just so soft on your skin okay and then whilst we are on the subject of interesting yarns um on the whole I don't really like chunky mohair I'm not really going to talk about it too much in this video because I think it's kind of its own thing I've sampled quite a few of them so I've tried the wool in the gang hip knit um cocon which I think are kind of the three that are most widely available in the UK and I think it's a personal preference thing, but I just don't really get it. Um, I, if I show you what I mean, it's, it's this kind of finish. So this was worked up on eight millimeter needles and it is the, yeah, Wool in the Gang Take Care Mohair. I don't want to single them out. It's just, this is the one that I have to hand. Um, this is in shade Cinnamon Dust. And I know that people do use them to really great effect. So the person who comes to mind is Vanessa 
of Ocean Knits and she's a very talented designer out in the States. Um, and yeah, she's done some really cool things with this, this yarn. It's just not for me. Um, so yeah, for the most part, not a fan of chunky mohairs. There is one exception to this rule. And you can tell that my cat also really enjoys it because she has chewed the skein to smithereens. Um, she managed to get, this has a lid and she managed to knock the lid off and get into it and chew it, which is delightful. But it's Bouche and Bouche uh, Le Croix, uh, Silk and Mohair. So this is a really interesting yarn. So it's almost like a chainette yarn um, or like a blown yarn. So the, the that's the strand and compare that to, if I grab that pink drops, because it's a similar colour. So on the bottom here I've got the drops and then on the top I've got the Le Croix. And you can see it's, it's quite a fat strand of yarn. Um, so the construction is really quite interesting and it's like, God, maybe four strands of silk. It's like the, the chain at exterior of a blown yarn is made in silk and then they've blown mohair through it is kind of how I would describe it. But it's really interesting and um, really quite beautiful. It swatches up like this so it really does just look like you're holding multiple strands of yarn together the reason i can't kind of fully fully endorse it is because it's quite expensive i can't actually remember how expensive this is on the top of my head but i want to say it's about 17 pounds a skein and you get um 148 meters so it's it's almost 10 pounds per 100 meter however if your budget permits and you don't like working with multiple strands of yarn i think you should really check this out it's amazing and it is a really beautiful fabric Bish and Bouche also have a regular mohair which is this beautiful denim blue shade um and that's also great it's just a bit it's it's um it's lovely it's just not necessarily super remarkable i wouldn't turn it down don't get me wrong but um yeah, I think Le Gros is really interesting. As far as I'm aware, there is nothing else like it on the market either, so it's quite a unique product. Like I say, it is just a bit more expensive. But if budget permits, I definitely recommend it. Overall, I'd say if you are looking for mohair alternatives, um, I'm going to kind of be repeating myself here, but once again, I would recommend the Camera Rose. There is another one that I want to highlight that has run away. Ooh, um, yeah, that I want to highlight, but I haven't actually gotten around to swatching yet. And it is Alpaca from Navia. Navia? Navia? Um, and I actually picked this up from Hobby uh, because they do stock other brands as well. And it's a 100% Alpaca, but it is a real lace weight. So it is super duper fine. I don't, yeah, you can see that. Um, it's a really, really fine yarn. So this is um, traffic. This is from a brand based in the Faroe Islands. Um, so it's really, really quite interesting and I'm super keen to see what this swatch is up like. It doesn't feel that nice, I'm not going to lie. It doesn't really feel like an alpaca. So if you, I've also got um, some, yeah, I've also got some um, Hobie, Hobby uh, soft alpaca lace, which is another, it's a bit like it's a uh, alpaca one, which I'm also going to try and get my hands on to try. And Lang um, Suri alpaca which is actually a little bit thicker and it feels more like kind of cumulus by fiber spates which is another great option um but quite thick um so yeah a lot of these alpaca based yarns are very very thick and they aren't really a true substitute so i think something like this which is actually also quite fluffy um and how pretty is this color it's like a proper turquoise it's just really nice um but yeah for the most part a lot of them are just a bit too thick so i think that camarose is the most like reasonably priced um option on the market and it's just a really good substitute for most mohair and again the um moonbeam is just so pretty and sparkly so i think i think they were really marketing these to the twilight fans out here so that's such a bad joke i need to stop saying it circling back from the um biche and biche Lecro, if you are looking for a luxury mohair out on the market and lord knows there are a lot to choose from i have a few different recommendations for you most of these are going to be high silk content yarns. So we're talking about kind of like the onion yarn that I mentioned. Although again, I think that this is very distinctive. It is very much a, a look that might not be for everybody. Um, so that's 40% silk, but we're also talking about um, things like Lang lace, which I talked about uh, in last week's podcast about uh, Laura's souffle top design, uh, Pemo's Knits. And this is 42% silk, 58% mohair. It's a really lovely option. It's very fine. Um, very, very fine. Um, I'll have some footage here of that top so you can kind of see exactly how fine it is held single and held double. 
but that is a really lovely premium option. Uh, my number one, if you if money isn't an object and you want a luxury yarn, would be Crea Deluxe Deluxe Silk Mohair. Um, of all of the yarns that I tried as part of this big old project, um, this was the one that I thought, oh, if I get married, I would make myself something in this. Not a wedding dress, but I would make myself something in this yarn because it is so luxe and beautiful. So it's sold in 20 gram skeins and it's 240 metres. So you do get quite a lot of yarn for your money. And that's also the case with the Lang. You get, um, I think, over 300 metres by Walk and Farm that. Um, and it's just beautiful. So the blend of this is really interesting because it's 45% silk. So I think that of all of the yarns I tried, this has the highest silk content. 33% mohair and 22% baby alpaca. So you kind of get the best of both worlds in terms of alpaca, softness and not being irritating to the skin. The mohair fluff and sheen and then the high silk content to give like a really luxury feel. So this is, where is it gone? This is what it looks like swatched up. So I made a swatch on five millimeter needles that has grown legs and disappeared. And this is another swatch held double on four millimeter needles and the fabric is just so pretty. It is so soft. It almost doesn't feel like there's anything on your skin. It's just beautiful. Actually, as, as luxury yarns go, this is £10.75 per skein. Uh, but it works out at £4.48 per 100 metres. So it's not crazy. I think I've actually talked about and recommended as everyday yarns, yarns that are a bit more expensive, or I will talk about everyday yarns. Um, so yeah, I think that's a really lovely option. Um, you would need a lot, obviously, to make a whole project, but um, I think it's so beautiful and worth every penny. I really recommend checking this out if it's in your budget to do so. Hello again. Um, so I just wanted to interrupt myself again and um, talk about a yarn that I forgot to include in this list. I don't know why, because I really enjoyed working with it, but I think it's because, I think I forgot about it because it doesn't actually contain any mohair, so it's a good luxury mohair alternative. Um, and it's Lang Cashmere Dreams. So this was very, very, very kindly gifted to me, uh, again by Simona, well I say again, it's gonna come up later in the video, by Simona of Knit Yarns. So thank you, Simona, you are an angel. Um, and it's, just the most beautiful yarn. Um, so this is a 65% cashmere, 35% silk blend. Um, I hope you can see how it's picking up on camera, but it's it's quite matte finish. So I'll hold it up so you can see it properly, but I've also got footage um, of it knitted up. Um, and yeah, it's just so nice. Um, so it's very much a premium option. Um, I think it's about 21 pounds RRP. Um, so it's, yeah, it, it is on the expensive side of things. But I think that if you were um, holding it with another fibre, because uh, it runs at 290 metres per skein, um, it would be a really nice way to like just make it extra, extra special. And if budget allows, yeah, it's perfect <laughs> for working by itself. There's no way around it. It is one of the nicest yarns I've ever used. Um, it's available in a really nice, subtle range of colours. Um, and yeah, it's just... It's just delightful. Um, so yeah, thank you, Simona. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think if you are looking for true luxury in, you know, like the most literal sense, this is a really beautiful option. And then I do also have a couple of other cashmere based options later on in the video um, in another section. So yeah, kind of include those in the luxury section too, um, but in like a Mohair, luxury mohair alternatives kind of way. Okay, I'm gonna stop rambling because this is not helping the video. Bye. And if you are watching this screaming at me that mohair is not the most ethical of yarns, I totally agree with you. There are massive issues in the mohair production industry. Mohair industry, in the, you know what I mean? Yarn industry, particularly in the production of mohair. So it's quite common for goats to have their horns removed, which I believe is like a very painful process um and not the most ethical and yeah it's a big issue um in addition to the treatment of the actual mohair goats in the production of mohair yarns there's also the question of the um silk so um it's very common in the manufacturing process for the silk caterpillars to be killed as part of the process yeah it's a big issue um i don't want to pretend otherwise it's not something i agree with or endorse and it is something that i try and think about in terms of my um own consumption outside of this project um, and I care about deeply. Um, 
it's very difficult to find out information about a lot of this kind of thing. There's not a lot of transparency in the yarn industry. It's something that when I have more time post PhD, I would like to look into more, but right now it's not realistic. Luckily, I have three brands to recommend to you if um, ethical yarn is your thing. So the first option is Knitting for Olive Soft Silk Mohair. This is probably my all time favourite mohair yarn. I think for me, it just strikes the perfect balance between having that beautiful visible silk core being nice and fluffy. So if I can tease this out a bit, I hope that you can kind of see how far I'm able to tease that yarn, which I really enjoy. Um, it's not crazy expensive. I'm not saying it's cheap, but it's not crazy expensive. Um, and it works really nicely held with another fab uh, with another fibre all by itself. I just, I just love it. I think it's pretty much perfect. Um, it's also 70% mohair, 30% silk, which is kind of my general preference. Um, and yes, so this is the first one that comes to mind. The, um, caterpillars that produce silk aren't killed in the process. It's available in lots of different colours. Um, it's just beautiful. I, I really love knitting for olive soft silk mohair. The second is from another Danish brand called Onling. Um, I'm probably butchering that pronunciation. So this is quite a similar yarn. I'd say it's slightly fluffier um, based on what I've tried. And again, it's 70% mohair, 30% uh, silk. So that's another great option. And then finally, um, along avec Anna. So this is very kind of gifted to me when the yarn launched, um, but I would purchase this again and I will purchase it again. Um, it's currently only, only available, I think in six colors. So I'll be very keen to see more colors come out, but it's a beautiful, beautiful yarn. Um, it is 72% fine kid mohair, 28% mulberry silk. This is the shade Royal and it is the most fantastic deep blue. Like you can see how rich that color is. Um, and yeah, it's another really lovely option. I've got it swatched up here with uh, Anna's Merino. This is in the shade uh, Chatagne. Chatagne. Uh, my French is not good. <laughs> and it's a really beautiful combination. And you can see how fluffy uh, the halo is there, but it also has that pretty silk look to it. So that's a really good option. If you are trying to be a more responsible consumer, I applaud you. Next up, I have a special category for um, generally being nice but I think overrated and a bit overpriced um, and this one I'm sorry to say goes to Rowan so this is their cashmere haze and this is about £20 a skein I think okay so this is £18.50 a skein and it uh, at least I got it for £18.50 so that works out at £8.04 for um, each 100 metres and it's a fine yarn like it's okay I, I it's quite soft this is what it looks like swatched up it's quite fluffy it's more on the matte side but it does have that glowing silk core so it's a little bit different to say the camera rose i've been talking about um and it's 40 percent alpaca 30 percent cashmere 30 percent silk um so you know it's very premium set of fibers um i just think it is too expensive um it i don't think it's nice enough to justify the price I think that Rowan, on the whole, is quite expensive. They do tend to operate with quite a high markup, I think. I mean, this is just me making assumptions, but um, yeah, I, I just think it's a little bit overrated and a little bit over, overly expensive. Um, it does the thing that annoys me, where they name the bit like the Wear Knitters Touch Me Mohair, where they name a yarn after one of the minor fibres in the blend, and it, it just rubs me the wrong way. If we compare that with Cardiff Cashmere Brushmere, um, which, oh sorry, Brush Light, which is a 100% cashmere that is not quite lace weight, so I'd say. So yeah, it's ever so slightly thicker than the Rowan. So this is the Cardiff Cashmere on this side and this is the Rowan on this side. Um, so it's maybe slightly thicker. Um, but yeah, this is, I think, if you're going for luxury, go for luxury and go for the, that real cashmere component. Uh, this is a very, very soft yarn. Um, again, I have worked with Cardiff Cashmere before, but I bought this myself and um, it's really nice. I'm really excited to swatch this. I just haven't had time. Okay, and then last but not least, I want to talk about kind of the everyday mohairs I recommend that maybe there's nothing particularly special about them, but they're really nice and I think um, are worth checking out if you are looking for like a good high performing product that isn't going to blow the bank, isn't especially subtle but isn't especially like fluffy either and I've got three options for you I believe so the first of these is Tilia from Vilkalana so this is one of my favorite 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 mohairs um, I just really like it I've used it for quite a few different projects at this point this shade was very kindly gifted to me by Knit Yarns um, so thank you Simona um, but I have purchased it a couple of times from her in the past just for my own use 
Um, I've used this in my valley sweater design and then I also used it for the petite knit zipper sweater both times in the shade latte which is a, a beautiful shade I really enjoy that colour um, and it's just a really nice yarn it's nice and thin so the strand is really delicate I hope that that is picking up I can't quite tell um, it's medium fluff medium amount of silky glow in the core um, it's not crazy expensive yep it retails for about seven pounds a skein uh, so it works out at £3.33 per 100 meters, and it's just a really high performing solid choice. So this is what it looks like swatched up by itself, so this is two strands held together on the 5mm needles and it's just like a really nice pretty and soft fabric, quite fluffy but nothing crazy, it's not as fluffy as the Izzia. And this is the same shade held with Knitting for Olive Double Soft Merino, rest in peace, um, and it's just again a really nice option. It's worth noting that if you are shopping from Kit Couture, who I absolutely adore, <laughs> that rhymes, um, their yarn is distributed by, well their mohair is distributed by Felkalana, so I'm pretty sure it is Telia. Um, again, it's the 30% silk, 70% mohair yarn, so it's, you know, up my street, but this shade of blue is just incredible. And this is held with uh, Double Sunday from Knitting for, no, from Sanders Garn. Um, and it just works really nicely to add a little bit of fluff and texture to an otherwise standard wool. The label is kind of falling off, but it is a uh, Gepard Kid Seta. So again, 30% silk, 70% mohair. I've got it in this really beautiful kind of turquoisey shade. Um, this is it swatched up, very similar. Um, just a really nice knitting experience. It's really soft. You get a slight bit of texture coming through from that silk, um, but it's nothing crazy. Again, it's kind of like a medium fluff. Um, it's just a really good option. So this is slightly more expensive, so this works out at £4.12 per 100 metres and it retails for about £8.65 in the UK, but it's a really good option if that's in your budget. I think they are pretty similar, so... You know. And then the third option is Mohair by Canard Brushed Lace. So this is again a very similar product, so this is 72% Kid Mohair 28% Marlboro Silk, so the blend is slightly different, but again, it's just a really nice knitting experience. Yeah, so this is it swatched up, so I think it is slightly thinner. I did have an issue with my tension here, so if you see a weird bit of stitch definition, that's why. Um, but yeah, it's just a lovely option um, if you do want something that's a little bit less silky. Um, and this one works out, again, it's similar price to the Gepard, so this is £4.74 per 100 metres, but it retails in the UK for 9 95 so yeah, it's a little bit more expensive, but... Um, really lovely, definitely recommend. Okay, last interruption. Um, I missed one out that I wanted to talk about and it is Kremka Soul Wool uh, Silky Kit, which is again another really lovely mohair option. Um, there's nothing especially remarkable about it on paper, but again it was just one of the yarns that I was really impressed with when I was working with it and swatching it. Um, and yeah, I really like it. It's something that I would definitely purchase again. Uh, my friend Meg at No Frills Knitting has just started to stock this yarn. So I think that next time I am looking for like a everyday, quite glossy looking mohair, I will be going for that. Um, I've got some footage uh, which will be playing over this. Um, but yeah, I think it's on the slightly more expensive end. But I also think it's, it's if, you, if you want, I guess it's like everyday luxury. Um, it, it is really lovely, so I do recommend checking that out too. And the smoky purple, I think that's the name of the colour that I got, is really delightful. So yeah. So yeah, that is it from me for today. I hope this has been quite helpful and sort of interesting in demystifying the mohair market. I know that there is a, there are a lot of products available, and they can look really, really similar on paper. And sometimes when they do look similar on paper, they are similar in reality. I think you know the. Uh, Gepard and Telia is a really good example of that um, and then other times you know they can um, in theory be quite similar um, so let's go back to drops versus if I can find it drops versus Isia again these are the same blend but the actual yarns feel quite different to my mind um, yeah the Isia is much softer much more refined feeling so yeah, I hope this is helpful. Like I say, there will be a blog post down below with little mini reviews uh, of all the yarns I've talked about. Um, but yes, happy knitting. If you have any questions for me about these yarns, let me know in the comments. And let me know if you think I've gotten this entirely wrong. Do you think that um, I've written off yarns that I should give another try? Do you think that I have over-hyped certain yarns? Let me know if you've tried them too and you strongly disagree with me because I'd be curious to find out. 
Um, but yes, I hope this has been helpful and as always, thank you so much for watching. Take care wherever you are in the world and have a lovely day. Bye.